Hello, welcome to the Forge Tutorials training. Today we are going to talk about View Models Tutorial with .NET Core. My name is Augusto Gonçalves, I'm part of the Forge Advocates team. On today's training, we'll be following the tutorial available on learnforge.autodesk.io. The goal of the application is to create buckets, upload files to those buckets, trigger the translation with mod derivative, and finally, view those models with the viewer. On today's training, we'll be covering the following topics. Setup, create server and basic OAuth, upload file and translate, and last, how to show that model in the viewer. So let's start with the basic setup. To get started, we need a Forge uh, account and we also need a Forge app. You can create those using uh, your Autodesk account. And we also need the tools for developing with .NET Core, which is the Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. When installing that, make sure to select ASP.NET and Web Development and also .NET Desktop Development. Now we are going to cover the first four sections of the tutorial to create account and install the software. Let's go to a live demo. So let's open the browser, go to forge.autodesk.com and click on sign in. Now you can type in your Autodesk account. If you don't have an Autodesk account, just cl click on the create account and follow the steps. Just type my password. You should land in a page like this. This is my first time logging in, so I don't have any apps. So let me go to create app. I see that all the services are selected. So let me go to the Forge name and say Forge Tutorial. My first app. And all of our samples use the same callback URL, localhost 3000 slash API slash Forge callback slash OAuth and let's create the app I see here my client ID client secret name description and callback my next requirement is to install Visual Studio so let me go here and say visualstudio.microsoft.com and we're going to select download Visual Studio 2019 click here and follow these steps run and that should be it just follow the steps to install Visual Studio as soon as you finish you should have Visual Studio installed like this if you click on it it should launch and you should see something like that on our tutorial we are just going to skip that and go to continue without code so we just completed the setup we should have the Forge account and Forge application and we also should have the IDE installed and running. To review, the application should be something like this and the Visual Studio should be installed like this. Next is the Server and OAuth section. On this section, we are going to create a server for .NET Core. We are going to use the File New Project option on Visual Studio Select ASP.NET Core Web Application and .NET Core 3.1. Then set up all the environment variables and adjust the startup.cs. Finally, create the OAuth controller.cs that will hold the authentication code, the ID and secret. These are the sections on the tutorial we are doing right now. So let's go to the live demo. Now let's start following the tutorial. Let's open the tutorial at learnforge.rodesk.io. We are going to select view your models and go to create a server and select .NET Core. So those are the steps you have to follow. To make it easier, let me divide the screen like this. And uh, the first step is to create uh, the .NET project and add the packages we need. So let's go to File, New Project. I'm going to select C Sharp 
and cloud and the ASP.NET Core Web application should be the first one on the list. Let me click next. Let's name it for sample and click create. Let's confirm that we want to use .NET Core, ASP.NET Core 3.1, empty and disable the HTTPS for our local host and let's click create. Now we go to the project, right click, manage NuGet packages. Let me resize this, go to browse, forge and install the Autodesk forge, install, click OK. And let's also install the Microsoft ASP.NET Core JSON. Search and install. And OK. And accept. OK, so now we have our two packages. Let me close this, save, go to Solution Explorer. Under dependencies, I should see my two packages. Next. We should go to the properties and add the environment variables. So let's right click, go to properties, go to debug, the environment variables. Let's select, uh, let's copy ASP.NET Core URL and add here. And add this as localhost and here. And also add the Forge Client ID. The Forge Client ID should come from the Forge application we just created. Let's click here and copy this, paste in here, go back to the tutorial and uh, copy the Forge client secret, click add, copy and also copy my ID and secret, come back here and paste and uh, just one more, we should add the callback URL, the callback URL is not, will not be used on this sample but maybe use it later if you expand the sample. And finally, let's change this to 3000. And uh, now I can confirm that all my settings are okay. Last, go to the startup.cs and uh, add this missing namespace and replace the content of the startup.cs with this new content which should specify the version of the .NET Core and also specify uh, static files to be served from my application. Next, we go to the Authenticate and select .NET Core or I can go to Authenticate here on the left menu and select .NET Core and it says to create a new controllers folder let me go to my project, right click on my project, add new folder, controllers, and uh, create a new class named OAuth controller. So click right here and add controller. Let me select API controller empty and click add. That should ask me for the name and I will type OAuth and add and just wait for it. Now that I have my class created, I can come back to the tutorial, copy the content and replace here. So this is implementing the endpoint for the token that is needed for the viewer. This is implementing the get internal token, which is used for upload and uh, translation. And this is the actual code that required the re request the token from Forge. And this is a code to get the environment variable uh, values for this piece of the code. And with that, we have completed this step. It's, imp uh, it's important also to notice that the public token exposure to the viewer is viewable as read only, and the internal token is create and read and write. By the end of this section, we should have the project created with the server setup. We should also have the OAuth code. Now let's upload and translate our module. For that, we need to create the OSScontroller.cs to create buckets and upload objects, which are the files. 
and we also need the mod derivative controller.cs to trigger the translation job. We are now following the upload to OSS and translate file sections on the tutorial. Let's do a live demo of that. Back to our project, we can click on Upload File to OSS or go back to the original tutorial and select Upload to OSS. Here it's describing uh, the retention policy, which can be transient 24 hours, temporary 30 days, or persistent until the file is deleted. Please note that the bucket name should be lowercase with letters and numbers and up to 128 characters. Our code is .NET and uh, for that we need to create the object, the OSS controller under the folder controllers. So let's go to our project, controllers, add controller, API controller empty and add and let's say OSS controller and go back to our tutorial and uh, those are, this is the code that I need. Let me copy this, go back to my code and paste. That's the code for the OSS. We should see here the this function is creating OSS buckets. So this is the tree that is returning to the UI side. This is the code to create a new bucket. And this is the code to upload files. Please note that this code to upload files is very simple. It's just uploading in a single chunk, so it's not resumable. If I scroll down, I can see the next section, which is translate files. Let me click here. And uh, this is describing that we, can, we have the source file to translate to all of the supported formats. And every time we do a translation to SVF, which is the viewer format, uh, we also get the thumbnails, geometry extraction, and data extraction. So let's go to .NET Core and we need a mod derivative controller. So let me go back to my project, right click and add a new controller, API controller empty and let's click add mod derivative controller and click add. Go back to my tutorial and copy the code that I have here and replace the code. So this only have uh, one function, which is the derivative jobs that is translating my file to 2D and 3D. And this is the code for the translation. By the end of this section, we should have the upload code and translate code. For the show on viewer, we need to create the HTML, which is the main file of our application. Then create the CSS that defines the formatting of the page. And finally, the JavaScript files. The forgeviewer.js contains the code to launch the viewer. The forge3.js show the list of buckets and objects. Now we are completing uh, the show and viewer section of the tutorial. And let's go for a live demo of that section. We can go to the next section of the tutorial at the next show and viewers link or go back to the main page and select show on viewer or on the right menu show on viewer. Always have to select the language .NET Core. So now we have to create a www root folder. Let's go here and right click and add a new folder. Let's call it www root. The icon will change indicating that this is a default folder on the .NET application and also create a new JS folder inside that and a new CSS folder inside that www root folder. Now you can go to the client side piece and you have to create the index uh, HTML, which is the main uh, page of our application. You can learn more about uh, the libraries we are using here, in this case jQuery for do manipulation, Bootstrap for styling and JS3 for the list of buckets. Those links should guide you on how to learn more about that. For all those libraries, we are using the CDN to uh, access the files Cloudflare. So let me come back here and go to W root and add new item and select HTML and call it index.html. 
and copy this content here as mentioned we are using the jQuery bootstrap and JS3 plus the viewer and the other files are going to create later moving next we have to create the main.css which contains the styling of our application add new item and uh, select style sheet and call it main and uh, place the content and now the tree which will create the tree of buckets and objects on my application right click on the JS folder and add new item and select JavaScript file forge tree and paste the content if you look at the very top we see that when the document is ready we are going to prepare the list of buckets and prepare to upload this will create a new bucket on the UI and submit to the server and this will render the uh, JS tree and whenever we click on the, on the on the item on the tree it's going to certify that the, the, the file was translated and launch that on the viewer right here this is just defining the right click menu on the tree this function and last this is about the upload and translate files on our application moving next we have the forgeviewer.js let me come back here and add a new item select javascript and call it forge viewer that's where we actually where we are actually calling the viewer this tutorial is, is this code is based on the basic tutorial available on the dev portal on the developer portal this is launching the viewer on production getting the token initializing the viewer with one extension document browser and uh, when the document is loaded we are going to get the default view of that model in most cases that's the that's the 3d view for dwgs it's usually usually the 2d view and last that's the code to get the token from the server side and with that we complete the client side of our application finally it's time to run the application for that we need some sample models and then debug and run the application let's see how we can do that to run the application we go to running your app and we need, to, we need a sample file on Revit or Inventor or AutoCAD to, to test it. Let me download the Revit file as an example. Let me select this one and hit save and open folder. So here I have my file for testing. Let me go back to Visual Studio and start my application. That should open the application on the browser, localhost 3000. As this is the first time I'm running my application, I don't have any buckets, so this list is empty. I can create a new bucket. Uh, this sample will uh, prefix all the bucket names with my client ID and will hide that to the list. So that's just a transparent thing to avoid duplicated names. Go ahead and create my bucket. It should appear here without the client ID as a prefix. If I expand, I don't have any objects there, but I can right click and upload a file. Select my file, that should upload the file to my bucket. Now that my file is here, I can see my file, click on it. That should mention that the file is not translated, I can start translation. And uh, the translation has started, I just have to wait. If I click again, it should show translation job is still running, 0%. So I just have to wait until the translation is ready. Now I can see my model in 3D. I can use my extension that I've loaded document browser to navigate between views. And that's it. Now that we completed our tutorial, how can you get support? You can go to Stack Overflow and post your questions using the Autodesk Forge or Autodesk Viewer or Autodesk Mod Derivative tags and the Forge team will help you with your questions. Thank you.